Um, what take us to the to the next step um, uh, that uh, of, of that 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 next sort of like pillar that you were talking about? Sure. I mean, they, in addition to you know wanting to break, erode the protections of the Fourteenth Amendment, in addition to wanting to enforce archaic laws, they also want to get involved in further regulation and punishment um, that doesn't, for organizations and individuals who don't conform to this plan. What's a concrete example of that? They want to strip the words reproductive health, reproductive rights, abortion from all government documents. It's impossible to do. But what it does mean is if you are, say, a public health organization that gets U.S. funding, now there's this hammer hanging over you. Are you going to take the word abortion out of everything that you use government money to do? Um, there's like kind of two prongs here. Like one is like, let's erode protections and then let's like really heavily police people. And they're using systems that are supposed to like PEPFAR, for example, it's an engine for HIV AIDS funding. It's an incredibly successful program. But they essentially want to say you can't actually do any PEPFAR programming if it mentions sexuality or sexual orientation or gender. Um, you can't do HIV AIDS education unless you emphasize abstinence. You, some of this is like things that might be familiar from the Bush years. Yeah. They're doing it in a different context where I think they have much more support within the Republican Party for doing things that maybe the Republican Party would have thought of as kind of marginal and not that important. But by connecting them to this like kind of vision, which frankly reminds me of, you know, the 14 words of the neo-Nazi party, you know, this is all about protecting these imaginary children, often presumed to be white children of the future. And with the specter of like protecting that child, they're able to do everything from expose kids to violence in schools to end HIV funding around the world if it doesn't comport with this worldview. Uh, and again, they're the the other aspect that they're doing is not only articulating these um, these principles, but they are going out and regardless of, you know, I remember when they were doing this for the CPA in Iraq, they mm -hmm. didn't necessarily find the um, the most adept people, but the it it seems like the quality of personnel you need to carry out this is much lower, frankly, than if you were to insert them and try and um, you know rebuild a society that had been bombed out. They're just going in there, and half of all they need to do, it seems to me, or even three quarters, is just to wreck stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a wrecking ball that they're handing them to in this document, right? Like, don't think about the justifications for what you're doing. You know, don't point to any specific policy. You just use what we've already given you. And now you go out and carry this out. And, you know, that could require everything from, you know, civil servants posts that are supposed to be apolitical. Like one of the things they want to be able to do is to have many, many, many more political appointees carrying that out, that, that those functions, so that ensures that somebody could have more control over who is in those roles, who would be carrying out this plan. You know, they need everybody from the head of Department of Health and Human Services to the grants grant admins, you know, within the State Department doing HIV funding. It's a top-down approach, but they need people all up and down the chain who are on board ideologically. Um, and that will be the primary litmus test for who they put in place as well. You can see that from the kind of recruitment efforts that they're doing, asking people about, you know, essentially when they got red pilled without using that word, you know, show us your social media profiles. Are there only two genders? How do you feel about Ill illegals? You know, it's, there's nothing policy based there at all. It's, it's purely far right vibes and do you right. there's no there's no criteria or qualifications outside yeah. of uh, there these, these are ideological purity tests all right lastly like you, you mentioned like there this is part of their recruiting do you have a sense of like where they are in their recruiting like how many how are they doing intake how many are there and you know and, and part of what you're saying about like all these questions and the social media profiles is so that the people listening to the show can't go and clog up their mechanism. They they have now a machine to make sure that they're getting 
the um you know uh, the 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 people who uh i don't know uh, buy the the entire uh, you know follow tpusa i guess right. uh, on road trips and uh you know uh, they're the first still going to have to buy the CPAC out, tickets sure. yeah right. i mean there's well, how are they doing like- it how are they doing it and do you have a sense of like how far along are they like do they did, are they putting people into a pool are they saying like what what do they do with those people? How do they keep them on ice until like the fall? That I don't know, sort of like what holding pattern they're in. Um, I know that they were doing recruitment online with like a Google form, which yes, conceivably anybody could fill out that Google form with whatever they want and, and send it on over to the Heritage Foundation. They were doing some recruitment in Iowa in alignment with presidential campaigning. That seemed honestly to be more about being a presence <laughs> right? Like we're marketing this thing that we're doing. I don't necessarily think they thought there were like ripe recruits for them at the Iowa State Fair, but maybe I could be wrong. I mean, they are just sort of casting the widest possible net here. What I have heard in terms of numbers, and I don't know for certain, you know, they're not disclosing how well they're doing. Um, But it seems like their numbers are not what they wanted them to be, that they were looking, you know, upwards around like 50,000 people to pull this off and their recruitment has only gotten them several thousand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on that level, it might be that there are just people who are way more content to post online about these things than actually sign up to go to Washington and carry them out. I guess it, it remains to be seen. I'm not too, too optimistic about that yet because you're nine months out from a job that you don't know if you're necessarily gonna have. Um, and maybe it picks up steam as we get closer to the election. And then I also got to imagine like the, the demo that they, they have to sort of thread the needle. We need to find young people cause it's going to be young people, right? I mean, it's mm-hmm. people in their twenties and their thirties who are going to be applying for these type of, for a lot of these jobs. And they also have to be lunatics who, uh, have like, uh, ideologies that were, you know, better suited for the 1500s uh, than, than today. But, um, I would imagine that's a bit of their challenge. I mean, I'm thinking of like what CPAC looked like over the weekend. Right. And imagining like who attending CPAC would be like in the bag for this kind of plan. And it could be as likely like the 20 and 30 year old Nazis who were being allowed in, um, some great reporting in the nation has shown, you know, they were, kicking out progressive journalists, but allowing avowed neo-Nazis to come into CPAC. So if that's, you know, wherever that exists and whatever even is the mainstream of the Republican party right now, I can imagine that they could find enough people to at least have seats filled. Right. But I also have to imagine that there is a behind the scenes effort going on at the much higher levels, right? Like of the kind of cabinet level positions. Um, if you look at the people who wrote various parts of Project 2025, you do have, you know, former DHS, former HHS, like Dan Severino um, wrote the health section. It's, there is some overlap with some Trump administration figures that they also are probably gonna try to get back on board. I would imagine. I imagine it goes both ways too, where it's, uh, you know, they're seen as a, a way to get into the administration. Mm-hmm. Uh, Melissa Jair Grant, we will um, uh, link to your piece in the New Republic um, uh, conservatives plan to ban abortion, cut LGBT rights starting next January. Really appreciate you coming on and uh, walking us through this. Great, thanks.